first one is you were talking about changing your life. And the way I like to think about it is your life is like your car. As long as you're just trying to get to work today, as long as you're just trying to get through the week and you're not open to changing anything, you keep the hood closed. And if something goes wrong, you tape it back together. And, and maybe that's how we go through life. Mm -hmm. But man, you pop that hood and you go, what could we get out of this? What, could, what kind of horsepower could we really get out of this? Now anything's possible. Now you're looking at it from a perspective of, oh, cut that out. Let's replace that with a turbocharger. Let's put this in. Let's drop a whole new motor in. Because now you've decided, I want this thing to be at peak performance, not just get me to work every day. And so to me, what you were, when you were talking, that's all I could think about was, was that sort of metaphor. Because to me, it just seems so obvious that like, yeah, if you don't open your eyes to the idea of making changes to it, then when something breaks or something's not suiting you, you just kind of tape it together and keep it back out on the road. Mm -hmm. But when you take, when you say, we're going to take it off the road all winter, we're going to work on it. We're going to make it better. I don't care what it costs. This is going to be the best version of me that we put back on the road in the spring. Now the sky's the limit. Let's get past the today. I think we're gonna do a great job. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Modern Man Podcast. If this is your first time listening or you're a repeat listener, let's stop meeting this way. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave us a rating to let us know how we're doing and you can catch a new episode each and every single week. This is a podcast where we work on connecting men in pursuit of their potential. And we do that by embracing discomfort, cultivating community, and putting wind in each other's sails on how we can live a happy and fulfilled life. And we're getting a lot of wind in our sails today from our guest, Jason Skisick, podcast host, coach, gym owner, U.S. Army vet, all around great dude with an amazing mustache. Jason, dude, thank you for hop hopping on the show. Ted, what's up, man? I'm really <laughs> excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Man, it's my pleasure. And I, I know this is going to be a good one, kind of just chatting before we ha hit the record button. Yeah. The, the energy's there, the vibe is there, but I would love for, for the audience to catch some of that and have you introduce yourself a little bit and uh, and talk to them. Let them know who you are, what you do, man. Uh, yeah, so listen, I'm uh, like you said, I'm a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, I spent some time uh, in the banking world as a younger man. I started a CrossFit gym about 12 years ago with some buddies from the Army. Uh, and, and who knew that was what was going to be the thing that ended up paying the bills. You know, I thought I was going to go to school for finance after on the GI bill and, and take over the world of business and, and ended up, uh, really finding opportunity in those things that I loved. And that's why now I talk to men and women all the time about kind of pursuing things that they're super passionate about. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, yeah, I'm a super active guy. I've got, uh, you know, like I said, I've been running a CrossFit gym for 12 years, so I haven't had a choice and recently, <laughs> recently fell in love with kickboxing and jujitsu. So that's taken up a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. uh, and my wife, Donna and I live in the Indiana dunes and, and we just started a, a family with our baby. Lucy is at a little over one year old. Hey, congratulations, man. I love that. And I'm sure fatherhood has been an yeah. amazing journey so far. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you're also a podcast host. Uh, is it the spear and clover podcast? Yeah, it's the Spear and Clover podcast, which if you're watching video, this is that that symbol right there. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Spear and, podca Spear and Clover podcast, I describe as it's where military mindset meets the spirit of the puppy. And so for the, the entrepreneurs that are out there listening, they'll understand this one. Um, when, when we did our deep core value work for my, my businesses that I've run, um, I revealed that there's sort of two different sides of the coin that make up who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. And that is military mindset. This is an acquired skill. This is something I got from the military. This is like discipline, hard work, you know, working hard towards your goals, teamwork, uh, you know, um, consistency, honor, things like that. Uh, but then there's the other one and that's the way I came. That's the way I was born. And that is spirit of the puppy. And so if you ask anybody, you know, when I was a little kid, I was like a little puppy. I was running around, you know, causing trouble, start setting fires, setting traps, you know, building forts, <laughs> you know, running all over the neighborhood. You really hard to keep me down. And that's never changed. You know, if you're somebody that walks into the, the, the front door of my, my gym, when I used to run it, I'm big arms. Hey, how you doing? I can't wait to meet you. I, I share energy with folks. Uh, and, and so spirit of the puppy is, is sort of the other half of what makes me, me. Uh, and so the podcast is just a reflection of that, you know, um, the way that the, the, uh, symbol came about 
was I go on what I call solo missions every single week. And these are opportunities for me to get out into the world, usually doing something physical by myself where there's no other obligation for a few hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways I like to do that is through ruck marching. So that's where I'll take a, a 40 pound pack and I'll put it on my back. Uh, I live here in the Indiana dunes. So we're rucking through the Indiana dunes, which is like hills of sand, right? Yeah. Uh, and I have my two Australian shepherd dogs with me. Uh, and, and so what'll happen is one day I'm rucking, I got a log on my shoulder, there's a 40 pound log on my shoulder and a 40 pound pack on my back. And we're rucking through the woods or through the, the dunes and I'm hoofing. We're doing yeah. 11 miles, uh, you know, six and a half, five and a half out, five and a half back. Uh, and I'm in a straight line, head down, feet moving, military mindset, the whole nine yards. And the dogs are just running out into the woods and playing. And then they're running over to the beach and playing. And they come back and check on me. And then they run out and roll in the mud and they come back and they check on me. And it just mm -hmm. occurred to me in that instant that at my best, I'm neither one or the other. I'm also, I'm, I'm going hard towards my goals, but I'm also playful and creative and fun and having a good time picking up new hobbies or meeting new people. Uh, and so that's how the Spear and Clover was born. Uh, mm -hmm. And it wasn't until a few years later that I had decided to make that the name of the new business, which is the, the podcast. And so at yeah. its best, we're highlighting entrepreneurs like yourself uh, who are hard working towards their goals, but also taking time to enjoy life and pursue things that they're super passionate about. Yeah, almost kind of like that that childish curiosity and yeah. the joy of of the journey. And and I had to adapt that. I had to learn that when I first started in, in business and this entrepreneurial and self-growth mindset was... The, the, the craziest thing is when we decide to heal or, or we decide to work on ourselves, we get that instant mindset and, and the vision of kind of where we want to be and where we want to go. But yeah. there's also the painful reality of how far we are from it. And that second half is where I had to learn and adapt how to enjoy the journey along the way. And even on the days I didn't feel like doing certain certain things that I wanted to do, when I didn't feel like going to the gym, uh -huh. there's days I wake up at 2 a.m. when my alarm goes off and I don't want to go to work that day. But I wake up and I go anyway, and it's almost a force of habit. It's a force of routine, and it's really kind of just the foundational, the foundational work that I've done with myself, which kind of is the commitment to the journey in terms of believing so wholeheartedly in the plan that I've set up to get to where I want to get to. Uh -huh. And I'm sticking to it with my head down and going. Something you mentioned before was values. And um, and I know that's something that's huge for so many people. Why is it so important for us to understand our values? Because I think a lot of us end up falling into what I would call the prescribed life, where I did everything that I was told I was told to do, graduated, got good grades, got a job, I'm paying bills. Why am I not happy? All right. I want to I want to react to your last statement before I answer that question. So let me do this in two parts. Yeah. The first one is you were talking about changing your life. And the way I like to think about it is your life is like your car. As long as you're just trying to get to work today, as long as you're just trying to get through the week and you're not open to changing anything, you keep the hood closed. And if something goes wrong, you tape it back together. And, and maybe that's how we go through life. Mm -hmm. But man, when you pop that hood and you go, what could we get out of this? What, could, what kind of horsepower could we really get out of this? Now anything's possible. Now you're looking at it from a perspective of, oh, cut that out. Let's replace that with a turbocharger. Let's put this in. Let's drop a whole new motor in. Because now you've decided, I want this thing to be at peak performance, not just get me to work every day. And so mm -hmm. to me, what you were, when you were talking, that's all I could think about was, was that sort of metaphor. Because to me, it just seems so obvious that like, yeah, if you don't open your eyes to the idea of making changes to it, then when something breaks or or something's not suiting you you just kind of tape it together and keep it back out on the road mm -hmm. but when you take when you say we're going to take it off the road all winter we're going to work on it we're going to make it better i don't care what it costs this is going to be the best version of me that we put back on the road in the spring now the sky's the limit and to answer your second question why core values are so important you know i think every entrepreneur and, and i know this isn't an entrepreneur show but i do i love my entrepreneurs so you're going to hear me talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. um to me it's a puzzle piece and so our core values for starters are not who we want to be. Our core values are who we've always been. Our core values are the only thing I can tell you about everybody's core values ever is they're not exactly accurate because these are just word representations of like the ember that burns inside of your chest, right? And mm -hmm. so if you're somebody who comes out and says, you know, I, here are my core values and I borrowed some from McDonald's and I borrowed some from Apple and I borrowed some from, I don't know, Warren Buffett or something like that. Those are not your core values. Your core values are who make you, you. What makes you the most successful version of you that you can be? And so that takes a lot of work. This is something that I help entrepreneurs through all the time. Uh, and I love to do it if you can't tell, Ted. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, once you know them, all of the sudden, so I'll give you a story. So we did our core values, our real, true, like deep dive core values for my gym business about six years in to the 12 years that we've been open. And as soon as I did it, I knew it was right because I had a puzzle piece. It was like a five-sided puzzle piece, five different core values that I could hold up to past clients, to past coaches, to decisions that we had made that were major along the way. And I could see, it was obvious, of course that person is our favorite client. He's spirit of the puppy, he's military mindset, he's head up, feet moving, he's tribal, and he's invested. That's a no-brainer. I never could do that before. And we had coaches or clients that just, they were great people, but they never seemed to work out. It was like every time I would say X, Y, Z, they would hear and do A, B, C. Yeah. And as soon as I had that puzzle piece that I could hold up, now those same people, it was like, oh yeah, that guy's military mindset, but he is not spirit of the puppy. Didn't want to come to the barbecue. Didn't want to go to the team retreat. Didn't want to do this. Didn't want to do that. Just wanted to show up and execute. That's great. Take it up the street. You know what I mean? And so what I've done, you talk about, you know, uh, how you reveal that is now when I go to interview new people, I'm asking questions that are designed to reveal their core values and attributes in that way. And so that's been a really effective way for me to go like, oh, you're not that. So it's great that you're this, mm -hmm. but we can't work together. Or it's great that you're that, but it's not going to work. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And what, what comes to mind in that process is there are so many people and, and, you know, we talk to men a lot about navigating through life, finding fulfillment. And, and one of the things we talk about, keep talking to the entrepreneurs, because I do talk about multiple streams of income and a side hustle and not being reliant on just one paycheck, because when that kind of goes dry, I think we've found in recent years that can happen and it could be detrimental. But we also talk about the the importance of core values and just understanding who we are. I, I mean, I think it's it's hugely important when we pick our spouses in life, when we pick our our teammates and employees and people to work with and things like that. But it also can get scary for some people who might be a little dependent on certain relationships. What would you tell somebody if they start doing that kind of ex exploration into core values and they find, you know, hey, there's this one value integrity that I leaned into for so long and I'm finding that maybe that's not as important to me as I thought and that might rework some of the relationships that I have already what would you tell somebody that yeah I think um I think it, it's they say that no man ever walks through the same river twice because the river changes and the man changes mm -hmm. and so one of the things I love to do in that vein is I like to reread my favorite books and when I do I never get the same stuff out of it uh, mm -hmm. I could give you a list and examples, but we don't got the time today, Ted. And, and so what I would say is just, that's the truth. And so when you talk about core values, as I said, your core values are the expression of that. In fact, I would argue that somebody's favorite song when they were in high school is probably different than their favorite song when they're in their 20s, which is probably different than their favorite song in their 30s, 40s, and so on. Mm -hmm. However, if you really understood your core values, or in this case, how they enjoy music, you could draw a connection to why that person at that time would love that song. And the same person at a different time would have evolved to this song. Does that make sense? Like if you look, I mean, Kanye West, man, listen to his first album, listen to his new album. There's connective tissue, but it's a totally different guy, totally different music. Yeah, uh, there is a guy. I was just going to say 808 and Heartbreaks is it's Kanye's album. And I remember the first time I heard that, I was yeah. like, uh, not that good of an album. Yeah. Then I went through Heartbreak and then I went through some <laughs> life experiences. And now listening to that album, I'm like, he gets me. But, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but you're so right in terms of, of how we evolve and, and, and how we become different overall. So, so with that sense, and you mentioned the importance of with those values, being able to identify the clients, being able to identify you know, when you interview and asking specific questions. Let's talk to some of the listeners who are entrepreneurs, who are business owners or business leaders. So what does that process look like when you have those values and you start implementing them into a business culture or you start implementing them into your life, into your household? Uh, what kind of outcomes do you see, positive and or negative, around your team, around your, your family, and around the people that, that you surround yourself with. Yeah, and I could even say this answer applies to anybody, anybody who wants to be successful in life, and whatever that means to you, is you know if, if you wanna be successful in one thing, buy a map, right? You have a map, it tells you how to get from point A to point B. And if you need to get from point B beyond, good luck, go buy another map. 
with core values and, and mission statements and deep work on who you are and what you believe in, now you have a GPS system. So whether it's business or personal life or how you view any number of different things, when you have that GPS system, it's, it's, it's sort of a heuristic approach to making these decisions. And so instead of from point A to point B, now you have the opportunity to say, you know, I think I'd like to be a baker. How would Jason become a baker? Well, he probably should do X, Y, and Z. So it gives me this GPS system where I can make any number of decisions on where to go with my life, with relationships, with family, with professional life, with fitness, with anything. Mm -hmm. and, and I can apply those core values. I can apply just my own, own understanding of who I am. I think as young men, most people base who their identity on, uh, who their identity is as young men is based on a few things. It's based on what they're told is good externally and b when they when people tell them you're good at this if a kid shows up to football practice and the coach says you'd be a good running back what does that kid do nine times out of ten i'm a running back that's their mm -hmm. identity now and then as we get older into like young adulthood and young manhood a lot of times people are basing their identities on who they see around them okay i have this friend and i take that from him and i have that mentor and i take that from him and i want to be like that person those are very good things this is a step in the right direction but ultimately, it's when we reach that next level of true manhood, true, like, balanced masculinity, where our definition of who we want to be comes from inside ourselves, when we have the ability to look at ourselves more objectively and say, you know, I don't like that about myself. I need to work on that. There is no more powerful motivator than looking in the mirror, not liking what you see objectively. It's so much easier to cut that out. Man, I love that you said that because uh, one panelist that we've had on Modern Man, he used to say all the time, um, are you taking color from the world or are you putting it back in? Are you taking color oh. from the world or are you putting it back in? Yes. And and the reality is, is, and we've talked at length about how for me, I always call them a board of advisors, different mentors. And and I love that that map and GPS because I would say that when I would have a mentor who was teaching me about business. I'm never going to forget when my wife pointed out the fact that um, that that mentor specifically traveled all the time and was never home. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know, I, my, her love language is quality time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, you know, I'm excited that you're learning all these things in business, but I'm worried for our relationship if you start leaning into wanting to travel more. And I told her, I said, well, listen, there's a mentor for business that I have in my life, but there's also a mentor that I have for relationships. There's a mentor that I have for working out. And, and when I say mentor, that's just another way of saying where I acquire color, where I acquire feedback, knowledge, tips, advice in these different realms of my life. And I will pick, okay, this person has a fit build or this person works out all the time and they seem like they know what they're doing. I'm going to learn everything I can about lifting for them. But if maybe they don't have a 20 plus year marriage that I'm looking yeah. up to. So I get different perspectives from different people. And I, and I always say like, like, okay, no one person is a template, but if I get enough of the little bits that I like from everybody, I build my own avatar and I build my own ideal person with myself based on the people and really some of the, some of the values that I see in others that I'd like in myself with that thought process. And, let's say we're building ourselves and we've, we've acquired this avatar and who we've become. When it comes to accomplishing things in life, they say, if you want to go fast, go, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. How do we build a dynamic team that can help us get to our goals, maybe help us get to some of the revenue goals and revenue projections that we set for the year? How do we identify strong dynamic teammates that can help run the torch to the finish line? It's a great question. Um, so I'm going to address this. I, I, in general, I'm trying to address it from a broader perspective than just entrepreneurship because I think it applies. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, tr I'm struggling to remember who said it on my show, but I've had three different guests that are very similar. I'm going to connect you with uh, after this that do men's podcasts. And one of them said, you need three men in your life. You need a mentor who's been there, who's further up the hill than you on the, on the climb of the mountain. You need peers, like a mastermind group. Uh, and you need somebody that you're mentoring below you. And Ted, I have all three of those things. I have mentors that are that are further along than me and very, very successful that have similar core beliefs and common values. Uh, I have a mastermind, really more than one, but at least one. Uh, and then several individual peers that are also entrepreneurs that I talk to regularly, every single day. I haven't worked. 
worked for over a year since I sold my, my second business uh, last November. And so other than the podcast, there's just nothing going on pr professionally. And I'll tell you what, I spend my, my days working with entrepreneurs, making podcasts, talking to my, my mentor, talking to my uh, my peers and talking to my mentees, that would be the, the third man in your life is somebody below you that you can teach the lessons that you wish somebody would have been there for you, uh, somebody that's younger. And so uh, I actually run a, a mastermind with with uh, three guys from uh, my jujitsu gym who are in their young 20s and they're all starting up entrepreneurial organizations and I'm trying to help them along the way. Nice. And all three of those things help a ton. Um, and there was more to this answer, but I kind of lost my train of thought there, Ted. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if you want to react from there. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's amazing in terms, of, I think, I've, I've heard something similar, I think they call it the rule of 33, or the rule of thirds, where it's it's sure. those three levels, um, and, and kind of that segued perfectly into kind of having those three levels or having that to build ourselves. Uh, the second half of the question was more in terms of team building, right? It, it, we could build ourselves to be as capable and as, as, as able as possible, but one person can only do so much and, and when we have if someone listening is like me and has b hacks those big hairy audacious goals yeah uh, there's there's just not enough hours in the day and will of heart to accomplish those things that i'm setting for myself so i do need a team right i i need um some other people who buy into the vision maybe some other people who match those core values or the the descriptions of those values and we can run together but i would also think there's some other intangibles and maybe some other measurables that helps make sure that i'm picking the right teammates in life yeah. and in business a hundred percent this is there's something that i call the butter the beautiful butterfly paradox that all entrepreneurs seem to have in common or at least the ones that i talk to yeah uh, and that is on the one hand i'm a beautiful butterfly and i create something where there was once nothing i walk to an open field and i say there shall be a building and we will call it this and we will put this this business there and and i can see it in my head i'm a visionary i can see it i've walked into dusty warehouses multiple times and been like this is a crossfit gym or this is a this or this is a that and I, i've gone into a float and come out with the address of a business that we then launched within like three, four months. Like I'm telling you, like I get that side, but the other side of that equation is everybody I meet should be able to do everything that I do as good as I do it. Entrepreneurs so often hire people and then get frustrated when that person doesn't just pick up their magic wand and create all of the things that they were able to create. <laughs> well, that's just not the way it works. We can't have it both ways. Either we're a beautiful butterfly or everybody's awesome. And that's just not the way it is. And so what we want to try to do is we want to try and push all of these roles that are in our head, all of these things that need to get done, all of these brilliant things. We need to try and translate that into training. This is what I help entrepreneurs do all the time. And that is codifying all of the magic. I can see the alchemist on the, on the wall behind you. All of the magic that's in our, in our secret sauce Effective uh, entrepreneurs become scientists. They take that magic, they codify it into rules and SOPs and, and, and responsibilities and roles. And then they pass it on to individuals who maybe can perform it at 75 or 80% as good as they do, but now we can impact the world on a much bigger scale. Does that make sense? Oh, the, things, the things that got you to where you're at now will shred you if you continue to try and use those skills and traits into the future as you grow. Mm. Man, and that's <laughs> that's been the hard thing for me to learn and adjust is when you have a vision, you have an outcome. And when, when I started getting a team for this podcast, having to learn to – you mean you want the show notes to look how? You want the oh, intro yeah. – I, I mean, as weird as it sounds, you want the we intro We have that to go, same story. <laughs> yeah. Where? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you think, hey, put the intro in. might sound self-explanatory. Yeah, but do we put that before the explicit warning app? Like there, there are some nuances to, to the details of really any business or – really any communication that you're giving to someone, even my wife today, a situation of taking the dog to get a Bordetella shot was coordinating the cars because the dog's only allowed in one car and you have to yeah. make sure that the keys are switched because I leave the house at 2 a.m. and there's no switch in the car at 9 a.m. when I'm already knee deep in the show. So, wow. <laughs> but like, wow. to, but to your point that the smallest things that need to be achieved require communication require mm -hmm. understanding. Um, and, and I think that is helpful in, in having that skill. Now, I'm interested to know in terms of your journey, because I, I, I like pulling back the curtains a little bit and, yeah. and meeting the, the, the guest and some of their story. How was the transition, which 
I, I I always say it every, all the time. If I haven't said it in this episode yet, uh, thank you for your service, making sure I, I give you the acknowledgement and the gratitude there. But how was that transition into civilian life? You mentioned your venture into banking, owning a CrossFit gym. What were the trials and tribulations on the way that you're thankful for that you have now that you might not have felt that way in the process? The army's hard. There's just no two ways about it. It's hard. Uh, you know, and, and because of that, um, you know, coming out, a lot of things were easy. Um, I also had four years, two of which spent in the desert, kind of plotting my return to civilian life. And I just knew that I didn't want to leave it to chance. And so this was Blackberry times, man. This mm. was, you know, this was the little, the little scroll ball thing. And like, I'm writing, I had no computer. I'm writing resumes and editing documents <laughs> and all this wild stuff in the army before I get out. But I needed to make sure that I had an apartment, a job, and like everything sorted before I hit my boots in the ground in Chicago and got back from the military. And so I just, you know, I did those things that were expected of me. What I will tell you was, coming back from the military uh, and I have, I know a ton of guys that came back from the military and they, they, they lamented the structure. They lost the structure. They lost the, the speed. It's difficult to go from having no bills to being responsible for everything that a normal adult person is responsible for. And I think a lot of people struggled with that. Um, for me, uh, I needed exactly four years, not four years and one day to get the discipline, the hard work, the focus, you know, before I went to the military, I was falling asleep in class. I was, I was blessed with entrepreneur's disease, which they mislabeled ADD. Uh, <laughs> and, and I would fall asleep in class if it was boring to me, or I'd be an A student if it was super exciting. And I just decided that I needed to be the shepherd of my own attention span, that I needed to go out and be the person that put myself in positions where I'm excited to do and learn those things that, that we're doing. And ever since I did, I just have an, a bottomless gas tank. And so, you know, there were times, you know, the banking thing, that was somewhere where I was capable of the work, but it didn't give me energy. So I'm sitting in the car drained every single day coming home. Whereas mm -hmm. with the CrossFit gym, I wasn't making much money at the time, if any, but man, I could, I could model it all day long. I was sitting on, I, I should be working on a $50 million deal and I'm working on my $5,000 a month CrossFit gym, you know, modeling it out, figuring out all the, the, the tax impact of buying another barbell. I mean, I'm telling you, man, the, there is no limit to how much energy I have for those things that are exciting to me. And so coming back from the military, I just knew that I had to put myself into a position where that was the case and sort of ingredients from there, it's gotten better and better over time to now where it would be impossible for you to offer me a job that I would take. It's just mm -hmm. impossible because I know it wouldn't work for me and I know it probably wouldn't work for you either. Yeah. I want a lot of the people listening rewind about 40 seconds, 45 seconds and, and rehear that because kind of the, the crescendo that you said, it would be impossible for you to hire me for a job. That is kind of the level of fulfillment. Now you could be working in a job and be so fulfilled that it'd be impossible for someone to poach you from that job. But that is the oh, level sure. of fulfillment I want everybody listening to hopefully experience in their life of where I am right now, the groove in which I'm do in, what I'm working towards, the purpose I'm chasing, that is more important to me than the dollar figure that you wave in front of me. Um, and, and I think that's a beautiful place to be. Uh, I'm glad you touched on it really quick as we're coming towards the end of the episode. Uh, you mentioned energy and having that endless gas tank. Um, I wake up every day, two o'clock in the morning. Whew. I get the, you know, the, the, the 2 PM sleepies. I get that at like 9 AM. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, my routine is I, I hit the gym afterwards. And ironically, I don't think, um, by the time I'm sitting down to record this podcast, I'm already 12 hours plus into my day. Uh -huh. I don't think I've ever sat down to record a podcast and have felt, I don't know if I got it. I, I don't never, know if I have. Never happened. That's And that's been something very unique um, yeah. that I never experienced in my life. So I'd like to kind of pick your brain really quick on how we fill our days with those those energy adding tasks, right? Those, those tasks where we can wake up and look at a to-do list and be like, oh, man. And they say like swallow the frog, do the biggest one first and yada, yada, yada. But how do we flip that and and wake up and look at the to-do list as not as a swallow the frog, but as a look at all the cool things I get to do today? Yeah, I have a former mentor, Alex Hormozzi, who's super, super impressive guy, very, very successful guy. And he says, if you can't do it for the rest of your life, don't do it for a day. Mm -hmm. 
and and I think that's maybe a really good way, good way to look at it. But listen, I mean, am I excited about uh, editing clips that are going to go out on Instagram? I wasn't until I realized it'll help me to do the thing that gives me energy, which is interview entrepreneurs and, and other people like yourself, right? Uh, and so just like you, I've never gotten off of a call with an entrepreneur and had less energy. I've never coached a CrossFit class and had less energy. I've never uh, built anything to do with my own businesses and had it drain me. It's just never happened. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do is you have to be a grown up and you have to put the connective tissue in your brain to the thing you don't wanna do being a good thing that gives you energy. And so a good example of that would be this, maybe a better example would be this. Um, do I like feeling sore? I actually do now. I actually feel good when I feel sore. Was that the case when I was in high school? No, I'd be like, I can't go to practice, I'm sore. You know, <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm sore, we're doing it because I know, because I'm a big boy, Ted. And yeah. I know that me getting sore is just me getting stronger and more jacked or whatever, you know, whatever, you know, words you want to use. But, and so I just connect that to my business. Um, and so what I try to do, you know, another former mentor, Mike Bledsoe, another CrossFit guy, uh, once told me there's three types of work. There's work that you can't do and don't do that. You suck at it. It's, it's too hard for you. You don't have the education or the requirements, whatever. Don't do that. The other type of work is either work that you can do and do well, but it drains you and work that you can do and do well. And you seem like you get energy, no matter how, how much you do of it. And ultimately there's going to be some of both in your life. The idea is to only take steps and make decisions that move you towards those things that give you energy. So what does that mean? That means hiring people to do administrative work. If it drains you, that means having a social media manager. If you don't like spending all your time on Instagram or figuring out hashtags and things like that, it means having somebody design your website for you. It means, it means paying for those things because I can tell you right now, the older I get and the more successful I get, the less money has anything to do with the decisions that I make mm -hmm. and the more fucking money that I make. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> clearly. Like, it's just... <laughs> Guys, maybe, maybe, before, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like, I'm just putting this out there. Successful people tell us every single day that it's not about money and that you'd rather have health and, and quality of life over money. And we think they're just lying to us. Like, people tell me that all the time. They're like, oh, they don't mean that. No, they do mean it. I really believe that Gary Vee would rather have a happy life than a hundred million dollars. I really believe, and I can tell you from my minuscule success compared to that, that I actually do work less than I could to make less money and enjoy my life better. Period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's my wife laughs all the time because she, she calls me frugal, not cheap, but frugal because I'm okay. very intentional on the things that I purchase. Yeah. But, and for her, she doesn't necessarily understand it because she mentioned a Roomba it was a few hundred bucks. And I was like, yeah, do it. She's like, that was the fastest decision ever. I'm like a Roomba schedules. We don't have to vacuum multiple times a week, maybe just once a week. And now that we just bought time. Done. And even the, the money I spent doing the podcast, she's like, I'm surprised you would buy the back end for your podcast. And I was like, they do sh the show notes better than I do. They do a very good job. They understand the vision behind the podcast. Like, I'm buying time. I'm buying comfort. And the very first thing I did when I had a team work on the back end of the podcast, I called my wife. I said, what are you doing today? Let's go for a walk. I put through on a weight, threw on a weighted that. vest. She's like, what is this? We never get to do this. And I was like, yeah, but yeah, I, I bought us this bonding time. And because that, that becomes priceless. I'm, oh, man, I'm glad you touched on I, I love that you say that because literally I texted my wife on the road yesterday. I sell three things. I only sell three things. Mm -hmm. More money, more time, and better health. That's the only thing I sell people. Like if, if, if anybody were to ask, like, what do you sell? It's not programs. It's not fucking coaching. It's not a mastermind. It's not a podcast. I sell more money in your pocket. I sell more time in your day for free things to do. And I sell better health because you have less stress. You there's, there's all sorts of things that will add to your health from that. And that's the only thing I sell. And that's the only thing I can, the only thing I can get excited to sell Ted. Like when I was deciding to build this business, I was like, what's the thing that I would stand on a mountaintop and like shout it out to the world. And that's it. I only want to sell you money, time and health. I love that. And we didn't even get to touch really uh, on the, on the health aspect here. I had a couple of fitness and health questions written down, but I know we ran out of time, which is probably just an excuse to have you back on the show sometime. I'd soon. love to come back. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, last question before I have the last, last question, but uh, Jason, man, this has been hugely beneficial. 
I want to make sure that the 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 guys listening they can contact you, they can get some of your content, and, and they can also use your service too if they're an entrepreneur trying to figure out their side hustle, trying to figure out their scaling. How can folks reach out, get in contact, and and, and see your work? I'm easy to reach. I'm Jason Skisick on Instagram. I'm Jason at Spearing Clover. If you want to um, send me an email, that's Spear and Clover. Um, and then Spear and Clover is our Instagram as well. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, but I'm most mostly on Instagram. So I'd love to hear from people. I talk to entrepreneurs every single day and it never drains me. So I'd love to talk to any of you guys. And, and by the way, just men's stuff. You want to talk about jujitsu or like, you know, getting into things like rocking or hunting or, or float tanks or any of that type of stuff, man, I can point you in the right direction. And I got nothing but nothing but a deep network of cool motherfuckers like you that, that like to do this type of stuff. I love that. And I, I would also recommend things like that too, because I'm leaning more into more of that kind of getting settled, still focusing on entrepreneurship, working my day job, building, you know, the, the structure and the foundation of, of my, my marriage and stuff. But yeah. the importance for, I mean, I've said it so much and my wife and I have been talking about the importance of me scheduling an Airbnb retreat where I just go and I get some silence to myself in the woods or, or, or connect with nature, uh -huh. do hard things, challenge my body. I want to sweat. I want to, <laughs> I want to pick up heavy things, work yeah. out with my buddy. And, and you mentioned being sore when, when I was in high school, I hated being sore. Me and my buddy work out and we gauge Ooh. how good the workout is. The word we use is juicy. Like, mm. are, is, is you, is you, are your legs juicy? Man, they're juicy. That's when you know you got a good workout in. So yeah. doing the hard things, I always tell guys, I encourage them. That's some of the way you, we want to test ourselves and know that we're good enough. So these are some some great challenging things to put ourselves through. Rocking Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Also having the fortitude to manage yourself if things were to happen in life. But Jason, this has been an amazing episode to say the least, man. And I, I would love to have you back at some point in time for the viewers and the listeners to get a little bit more of the value that I know was has barely been tapped into. Oh, we could go all day, Ted. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. We're peas in a pod, bro. Absolutely, man. My last question here, I always ask at the end of the episode uh, for, for the guests is what is one thing you've maybe seen or witnessed in your life that has kind of shaped the way you view the world? You know... That's tough to answer. Um, what I will tell you is I've never gone wrong assuming that the next person I meet is going to be a good person. I've only ever gone wrong assuming that the next person I meet is going to be a bad person. Mm -hmm. I like that. Jason Skisick. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm going to recap a couple of gems really quick, if, if you don't mind, yeah. because I know a lot of people listening, they're either driving, cleaning the house or whatnot. Hey, take care of the chores. I got the pen and pad for you guys. So we we, we broke it down. Um, something you mentioned early on in the episode, the solo missions, you kind of brought it back ar around at the end. And let me, let me tag that too. Uh, you were yeah. talking about collect collective elective suffering. So there's two types of, of things that I do every single week. One is solo missions where I go by myself. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is collect elective elective suffering and that's where i get in a room with other people like us men and women and we agree we're going to suffer together and, mm. and and that's from uh, my friend coach robin lalonde she came she's the one who told me that and i just love that so much because whether it's crossfit or ruck or rucking with a friend or uh jujitsu or hot yoga or zumba it's like this is going to suck we're going to go through it together or war we're going to go through it together and we're going to develop these bonds together i think that's incredibly crucial for for adults yeah. Oh no, I love that. Collective elective suffering. C -E -S. Also with also with those uh the solo missions, man. I'm gonna have to implement collective elective suffering in in, yeah. in my life a little bit more. And then not only having those to to help you through your day in and day out, your routines, but also that car. When you identify your growth or the possibilities, when you look at yourself as a car, are you just keeping the gas in the tank and just going through, or are you tweaking this bad boy to see really what you can get out of it? Are you really seeing what you can get out of life? If you see it as that car, you want it to operate at peak performance. And who we've always been, we look for our, our, our virtues. We look for the things we stand by, but there's evidence in that in our lives and maybe just doing the work and sitting in silence and maybe picking our brain, journaling, and finding out those underlying values that have driven us through life can actually better help us understand ourselves and the relationships around us and also better equip us to lead build a company, build a team, and build a life. And then if you're trying to be good at one thing, get a map. If you're trying to holistically grow and improve, get a GPS system. I love that because you can't get just 
one template on where you want to go. There's so many different avenues and so many different sources for value. And one of the best things I love when you said, I need to work on that. Some of the best things is sometimes looking in the mirror after all the input you had, after all the things you've learned, looking at yourself objectively and identifying what you like and don't like and working on that person in the mirror. It is the best and most valuable thing you can do for yourself. Jason, thank you so much for being on the show, man. So much value. Guys, we appreciate you making it to the end. As always, we have a new episode each and every single week. And the best compliment you can give us is by sharing this with someone you know can get benefit from it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you can get a new episode each and every single week. And leave us a rating so we can know how we're doing. The only way we can solve any issues or get better is by you telling us what you'd like to see, hear, or discuss. And I promise we are going to look at those ratings and do our best to oblige. With that being said, guys, as we say at the end of the episode every time, everybody wants the sunshine, but they don't want the rain. But you can't get the pleasure without first the pain. Let's grow. <laughs>